Joining me on the call today, I have two very, very exciting pros. Uh, I have Kate and I have Yi Lin. Welcome to the call. Thank you. Glad to be here. Today's topic is about trust flow leads to loyalty. And I think, you know, we live in a world that's over communicated. And one of the problems is that we're getting so many marketing messages coming at us all the time. The trust is really a, at a premium. And I know Yi Lin is a specialist in outreach and cold marketing. And Kate is a specialist in creating websites that not only engage, but build trust. So I really want to tap into this idea of trust flow leads to loyalty. So I might start at the top of the funnel with Yi Lin. So tell us a bit about yourself, Yi Lin. Well, so I run a lead generation agency. And, um, you know, that's where most businesses struggle. They struggle to generate, you know, high quality appointments and inquiries. Mm -hmm. And that's where I guess we come in because mm -hmm. we're able to do that within a timely manner and within a defined budget. And a lot of what I do is, as you mentioned earlier, is in the cold outreach space. Yeah. And, and that's in the B2B space where you're trying to prospect, you know, um, your ideal target audiences to get them to basically discover what you do, um, essentially. Uh, and what I do with, what my cold outreach does is what what's really unique about it is the ability to actually hyper personalize the messages um, mm -hmm. that we send out. So imagine, you know, reaching out to thousands of your ideal customer prospects mm -hmm. and it comes across as if you've written each and every email yourself. Right. So, yeah. That's a little bit about what we do um, and the capabilities that we have. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so talking about this whole idea of trust flow, mm -hmm. right? How, how do you see trust playing out in what you're doing with cold outreach? A huge part, a huge yeah. part. I'm sure a lot of people get this. They get tons of spam messages in their inbox or anywhere for that matter every single day. Yes. Uh, what makes what we do stand out, again, comes back to the personalization, building that trust. People want to know that um, you've spent the time to learn about their business, you understand their business, and that's a key part because if people don't trust you and you've yeah. just come across like you've just copied and pasted everything across, they're just going to just scheme through it and you're not going to even have a chance at all to speak to them. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So so really you're customising the cold outreach and you're making sure that there's a level of connection already in that initial contact so yeah. that people look at it and say, this isn't a bot, this is actually yeah. a real person connecting with me. So right. I want to talk about the next element, which is, I guess, where, Kate, you come in, is people get these cold outreach emails and uh, hopefully they click through or they engage in some way, shape or form. I guess the next thing they're looking for is the credibility of that individual. So they're going online and they're Googling David Guest. So tell us about the importance of trust flow in web design and what people probably need to consider when they're building websites. Well, Everything you, you just said that the whole world is over communicated now. And that's certainly the case with websites. You've seen good ones, you've seen bad ones. Yeah. And I guess intrinsically, you will know what a good one is and what a bad one is. And how I determine that is that everything you look at is designed. Mm -hmm. It's just designed well or it's designed poorly. And if you're looking at something that is well designed, it's going to give you that feeling of, ah, this is right. This feels good. It feels good to look yeah. at. It feels good to read. It's interesting. It's leading me in the right place. So the first part of the trust flow in websites is to have a good design. Mm -hmm. and people will tell you other things. And, of course, there are other things like, oh, well, you've got to have perfect SEO and you, you've got to have... Um, you know, the certain, the copy read a certain way. Yeah. Sure you do. But if you're, if you're showing something, someone something that is poorly designed, they're not going to last and they're not going to think very highly of you. So what we want is to get that first quarter of a second um, with someone where they go, oh, this is good. Mm -hmm. And that's all about design. Cool, cool. So really, there's two elements here. I think, Yi Lin, you're talking about this idea of customizing the message so mm -hmm. that it actually feels like someone cares about me. Yeah. And, and then the second piece is that uh, I think what Kate's touching on is this idea of design isn't obvious. It just gives me a feeling. 
Right. Yeah, that's right. So so there's there's a level of congruence that needs to occur. So if I do a very customized message, but my website's a bit clunky, my chances of converting just drop really dramatically. But if I have a really good website that's got the right feel and the right brand and everything on it, but my outbound is, like you said, um, I, know, I don't know about you, but my LinkedIn box is just flooded with those. And it's almost like they all cut and paste from the same place, the messages. It's like, yeah. seriously, how about changing one word? So I think uh, this whole idea of trust is becoming more and more critical because as the noise increases, because I don't think marketing is slowing down, I think it's speeding up. Mm -hmm. I think people are becoming more discerning. So, you know, things automatically go into the promos tab. People automatically don't read their LinkedIn inbox. And I think there's even an option there where you can have stuff that probably is of interest to me and stuff that probably isn't of interest to me. So these filtering mechanisms are going to get more and more critical. And even with the new with the new releases, I know that uh, Apple and Google have created yeah. some sort of email changes that are really going to dramatically decrease unsolicited emails. That's right. Yes, that's right. Everyone needs to have uh, have specific settings in their emails now to yes. make sure that um, they are the legitimate person behind right. that email. Right. So. What we what we need what what we're very conscious of now is is our time being robbed from us, let alone our money and everything else. Yes, but we get so much time wasting junk in our email and across our faces everywhere that we we've become very guarded, mm -hmm. and it's very important to develop a method of getting people to put let that guard down. Mm -hmm. And yes. I think you, Lynn does that through personalization and making sure that she can get the message across. But when mm -hmm. they click that button, you've got to continue that trust flow through mm -hmm. to the website. Excellent. So to, to me, this is always this whole idea of a funnel is no like and trust, mm -hmm. right? Because no like and trust are the first three steps of any marketing strategy. People need to know you exist. So you need to go out and find them in some ways, either paid advertising or direct outreach. Um, they need to like you. So in other words, they need to see you as not a threat. Okay. In the first instance, trust is built through building that relationship over time. So no, and not, last... more than not a threat, they need to see you as legit. Yes. Yeah. So trust, trust sort of leads to try. Now to me, try in business means you're going to download my free ebook or whatever it might be, mm -hmm. but also open it, right? Not just yeah. download it, but consume it or you're gonna watch my video, or you're going to engage in my content. And this gives people this ability to try before they buy, I guess, in the in the old terminology. But I, I'm mindful of time and I want you guys to think about what would be your top three suggestions or tips in relation to your area of expertise. So in your area, Yilin, cold mm -hmm. outreach, what are your top three tips for people who are looking to do cold outreach? What are the things they should be mindful of or they should be pay, paying attention to? I think the first thing is with cold outreach is the foundation. And like you guys mentioned, like with all the updates that come in, you've got to make sure you set up your authentication, which is like your DKIM, uh, SPF, all these technical stuff to make sure that you are going to get into an inbox. Now that's the foundation. Uh -huh. <laughs> the second thing is you want to make sure your target audience, it comes down to any marketing, you've got to really understand your target audience, uh, audience and mm -hmm. the messaging and their pain points. Yes. Because if you aren't communicating or uh, resonating with their pain points, they're just going to, again, put through. It's it, you know, They're not going to bother with what you're saying. Mm -hmm. So that's my second tip. And the third thing, it's always follow-ups. <laughs> People forget that. Like I can generate all the leads that you want and they can just sit there. But if we're not constantly following up, you don't have a system to follow up. Yes. It's, you know, the whole system's going to break apart. So mm -hmm. those are probably my top three tips, I'd say. I always imagine, you know, the old days where you went to the bank and they had those shutters in case you're a robber, they could just put the shutter up. Yeah. But every person that you try and outreach to has their button, their finger on the button, right? Yeah. And whatever you're doing, they're looking at it going, is this try is this person trying to sell me something? Because mm -hmm. if they are, I'm hitting the button. And so That's this right. is like those shutters are gonna go right up. Yeah, no. immediately. And it's just a button, it's a button press and you're done, right? You go into the spam filter and it's over. Yes. So I think that whole idea of making sure you've got the structure in place, setting up and making sure you're complying, number one. Number two is actually giving them value. So understanding where they're at and communicating that through. And then the third one is to make sure, well, once they have said, all right, I'm not putting pushing the button, 
what are you doing from there onwards? And I just sort of touched in on that is timing. Because I think in these in this day and age, people's expectation is that you respond within very tight timeframes. That's right. So I don't know about you, but if I'm if it's 3 a.m. in the morning and I'm searching online and I find a site I like and I say I'm interested, I expect to see an email immediately confirming. Yeah not tomorrow morning when it's business hours, but immediately. And so I think that timing is part of that too. Um, Kate, let's ask you, what are, what are your top three tips for people who are looking to build trust flow within their web presence? Okay, so the first thing is there's just a really simple equation. User experience equals trust. Well, good user experience equals trust. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. The next thing is just like Yulin said, your transparency and authenticity has to show through immediately. I don't know if you remember back in the day, you know, back in the 90s, every small business tried to look like they were a 150-person corporation and uh, they tried to hide the fact that they were a small business. That doesn't cut it these days anymore. So no. people want the backstory. People are interested in the backstory and they don't mind if you're just a, a single person trader or a small business. Uh, they just want to know who you are. Right. And so I, I think having uh, photos of yourself on the on the website is a really good way to show people immediately who you are. Okay. Then show them what other people think you are. Okay. So they want to see your reviews. And I don't want to hear the word testimonial because that's just someone you snuggled up to in order to create a nice review for you or a, a nice uh, set of words for you. No, 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 no. I don't want a testimonial. I want a review. So take that word testimonials right off the website and put reviews because that's so much more um, cutting edge and hard hitting and that builds trust. Okay, let's see what everyone else thinks. Yeah. Um, and, and then leading on from that is social proof. And what gives you social proof? Social media. Is your social media feed up to date? Mm -hmm. is, does, it, does it reflect what's on your website? Do I get a picture of who this personal business is altogether from yeah. the website and the social media. Yeah, fantastic. So re really, like you touched on an important point here, you talked about reviews. And I think some people are scared of, of, of giving people availability of reviews because sometimes they get a bad one. And I've always learned it's not whether the review is good or bad, it's how you respond to those reviews that makes all the exactly. difference. Exactly. So I look when for the you get bad, that bad review. You yeah. just respond. You say, "Look, I'm sorry, this wasn't a great experience for you. Next time, what we would do is blah blah." Or you say, "I can't find you. You're not a client on our database," which is quite often the case. <laughs> yeah, it's just an anonymous yeah. review. So I, I think you're right because what what you're using is that third party. So you're saying, "Don't listen to me. Listen to the rest of the world and what they think of me." Yeah, that's super important as well. So, so really, like, there's a couple of gems in here. But I think this idea of trust flow and leads to loyalty is so critical for anybody who's looking to grow their business because we are in a sea of noise right now with marketing and yelling louder is not the solution. I think we need to get smarter about how we communicate people's expectation of who we are. I like the idea of photos as well because I think putting stock photos on a website is literally hiding something. Because for me, the first thing I'll do when I go to anyone's website is I'll go to the About Us page and I'll look for a picture of a person. And if I can't see one, mm -hmm. and all I see is this motherhood statement of we are well established and we've been experiencing There's nothing about an individual. I got no idea. I, 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 mean, I want to see the person in their backyard wearing their jeans with their dog. Gotcha. Exactly. <laughs> all right. You can't be sort of clearer than that. <laughs> That's very good. Look. Obviously, this is a in-depth and, and a pretty important conversation for anyone who's looking to grow their business. Um, I'm excited about the fact we're actually going to run an event where we take a deep dive into this idea of trust flow, and we're going to talk about how to generate leads and convert them into loyal customers. And that's where each one of us is going to talk specifically about how you put that together. So guys, really appreciate your time today, your insight. Hopefully, this gets people to want to come along and see what we can offer. And hopefully we can get some, not testimonials, some reviews, reviews from the event so people can see what we've actually done. So thanks again for your time today. I think so. Yes. I